John chapter 20 verses 19 to 31. You believe in me Thomas, because you have seen me says the Lord, blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. On the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in their midst, and said to them, Peace be with you, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. In Da Vinci's Last Supper, Thomas the Apostle's identity was obscured by layers of paint. The painting of the Last Supper had to be restored from time to time because of the inevitable deterioration of the fresco on the refectory, monastery, or seminary wall in Milan, Italy. A fresco, is a painting made on freshly spread moist lime plaster, instead of canvas, and with water-based pigments. During World War II the refectory was bombed, and the fresco thought lost, but it survived with only minor damage. In a way, the history of Thomas's identity in Da Vinci's Last Supper gives us an insight into his personality and activity on that fateful day in the upper room, when the doors were locked, and they were all afraid. Maybe his name tells us something perhaps Thomas was not only a twin but was of two minds so to speak. Or when it came to listening to Jesus, he was divided, unsure about the truth of Jesus' resurrection. Picture the apostles as frightened men, hidden behind locked doors, waiting for soldiers to take them away. Then suddenly Jesus appears and said, Peace be to you. The apostles were already afraid of the Jews, now they were terrified. Jesus then shows them his wounds as proof that it is really he. Luke tells us that Jesus asked for something to eat. He ate a piece of broiled fish. Clearly, he and his humanity was really with them, because ghosts don't eat. Jesus again identified himself with his father. He told the disciples by whose authority he did his work. How did the father send Jesus? He sent him with authority. How does Jesus send out the apostles? He sends them out with authority. Jesus breathed on the apostles. The only other time God breathed on someone was when he breathed life into Adam. Jesus breathed life into the apostles and gave them the authority that the Father had given him. Verse 23, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Confession, or Reconciliation Why do Catholics confess their sins to a priest, rather than going directly to God? Well, the quick answer is because that's the way God wants us to do it. In James 5:16, God, through sacred scripture, commands us to confess our sins to one another. Notice, scripture does not say confess your sins straight to God and only to God, it says confess your sins to one another. In Matthew 9 verse 6, Jesus tells us that he was given authority on earth to forgive sins. And then scripture proceeds to tell us, in verse 8, that this authority was given to men, plural. In John 20, verses 21 to 23, what is the first thing Jesus says to the gathered disciples on the night of his resurrection? Jesus says to them, 
peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. How did the Father send Jesus? Well, we just saw in Matthew 9 6 that the Father sent Jesus with the authority on earth to forgive sins. Now, Jesus sends out his disciples as the Father has sent him, so what authority must Jesus be sending his disciples out with? The authority on earth to forgive sins. And, just in case they didn't get it, verses 22 to 23 says. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Why would Jesus give the apostles the power to forgive, or to retain sins if he wasn't expecting folks, to confess their sins to them? And how could they forgive or retain sins if no one was confessing their sins to them? The Bible tells us to confess our sins to one another. It also tells us that God gave men the authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus sends out his disciples with the authority on earth to forgive sins. When Catholics confess their sins to a priest, we are simply following the plan laid down by Jesus Christ. He forgives sins through the priest, it is God's power, but he exercises that power through the ministry of the priest. In 2 Corinthians 5:18, St. Paul tells us, All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Catholics confess their sins to a priest, rather than going directly to God because that's what scripture asks us to do. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your strength. But with the temptation will also provide the way of escape. That you may be able to endure it.